so it does allow Protoss uh, uh, a little bit more maneuverability. And, and Stark here, uh, with a couple of Zealots and Dragoons, uh, trying to take advantage of the fact that Saviors um, you know, gone for the three hash build, uh, and, and that overlord, if that overlord goes down, that's going to be bad for Savior. And that overlord's been killed, so that's kind of bad for Savior because, uh, and, and, and it looks like he's going to lose a second overlord. And I don't think Savior has a hydro list stand up yet, so this could be very bad for Savior. It, uh, this, this, uh, you know, he does have a few zerglings, but this is Stark's moment to attack because Savior hasn't got any sunken here. Okay, he's got his hydro list stand up now. His first hydro list is popping out, but uh, Stark should be able to finish off that overlord, and that's going to slow down Savior from making units in the middle. And Stark has a chance to pressure Savior here. Unfortunately, he only made one gateway, so he can't really produce a lot of units. Uh, and he's not really going to be able to pressure Savior a whole lot. But Savior is for forced to uh, position his units at his natural uh, in anticipation of, works, of, of Stark's attack. And that makes it very difficult for him to, t to, to stop these crosshairs from taking on his Overlord. And Stark exerting some early pressure here on those Overlords. Because what's that going to do is it's going to slow Savior down. And, and he's having difficulty guarding his ramp here. He's, he's got those two hydrolists trying to protect his ramp. And, and Stark has moved into his base. This is... Uh, this, this, this could uh, put Saber in potential trouble here. Those crosshairs continue to kill Saber's overlords um, uh, and, and cross his units have killed off all the Zerglings. And he's still got his uh, Zealot and his Dragoon surviving. So uh, Saber in, in desperate trouble here. Stork really piling on the pressure early on. And we expect reinforcements for a right for Saber soon. Saber needs to get a Sunken or something down to assist his defense. Um, and, and Stork here is going to have those Templar up very soon. So Saber just, just uh, basically producing Hydralisks. Okay, fair enough. He doesn't need Sunkans. He, he can keep going with the Hydralisks. Uh, and, and he does need that. But the fact is that he's lost a lot of Overlords. So that's going to be difficult for him to mass a few units. I still think a Sunken placed, especially in his main, is vital uh, in case uh, Stork decides to try and drop Dark Templar or sneak Dark Templar by into his base. Uh, Saber also needs to position his Overlords well. Uh, Stork at the moment has got Air Supremacy with those three cr Crosshairs. So Stork, so Stork is going to try and maintain that Air Supremacy. And... Uh, uh, he, he's building a, 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 a forge. He, he isn't building a robotics facility, so he's not going to be trying to go for a, a, a quick Dark Templar drop, that's for sure. But the fact that he's got... The, see, you can just see Saber just had to produce three overlords there, so he wasn't able to build any units uh, during that time. So that's definitely slowed Saber down somewhat in this game. Um, uh, as I've said, Saber is vulnerable to the Dark Templar uh, and the fact that he doesn't have fast movement of his overlords. So uh, he, he is building that Sunken, which is which is vital because you can see Stork, uh, you know, willing to sacrifice those crosshairs to try and take out Saber's overlords to try and keep his unit production down. But Saber has got enough Hydralis luckily out before he lost those before he lost his overlords previously in order to be able to protect. But you can see that there is no detection, there is no uh, stealth detection in Saber's main, and uh, Stark's Dark, Dark Templar are just popping out now. Um, so uh, Stork, on the other hand, expanding as well, he's realized that uh, you know he, he he he's not going to be able to win this game purely uh, from that one base because uh, Savior's got his three hatchery set up and is fairly safe in it. Uh, but I don't think Savior realizes that Stork's already got that Dark Templar out. And Stork, Stork if he if he brought a Zealot with those Dark Templar, a couple of Dark Templar together, he could easily st sneak those Dark Templar past Savior's uh, Savior's defenses. But I think that was a big mistake by Stork. He revealed his Dark Templar to Savior too early there uh, by by going for those uh, Hydras. I think he should have bided his time. Uh, he still has air su supremacy, but uh, he he's only seems to have one crosshair running around now, uh, and he's also got high templar, uh, and and. Um I think this is going to make the game very hard for Savior. Uh, okay, Savior is now researched. He's got his layer up and he's researched uh, fast movement for his Overlord. So that was very clever. I guess he did anticipate Dark Templar coming from Stork. And this is going to allow Savior to pressure uh, Stork now. Stork only has a High Templar and a couple of uh, cannons in his base. But but just the way that the, that, that small group of minerals that are there is going to is probably going to allow Stork to defend that base very easily uh, with those two High Templar. So uh, that should allow Stork to uh, expand more comfortably. But you could, you could say that that, that investment that kind of Stork made in crosshairs, while it definitely did help to slow Saber down a little bit, didn't really, uh, you know, push Saber, it didn't really cause Saber enough damage. That the, the Dark Templar crosshair strategy didn't work. Saber managed to to hold off against that. Um, so. Um, Savior now just consolidating his position. He's just massing up those hydro risks, uh, and, and 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 to be honest, that's not going to be enough. It, it, it just having the Savior hasn't gone for spars. So he's not going to have any mutilists. But but just having those hydro uh, is not going to be enough, in my view, to break uh, break um, Stork's. Um, defenses there. Uh, I think one of the things that Savior does, uh, and Stork finally realizing that he's going to need drops, is building a robotics facility. I think uh, one of the things that Savior does very well, uh, and what I think Savior will need to do here, is, is gain map control. I think he will probably need to establish an expansion in a couple other places in the map and defend them very, very well. But it looks like Savior is going to be setting up for a drop here. Uh, it looks like he's going to set up for a drop in, in, in Stork's main. Uh, it is unusual to see dro drops in, in, in uh, Zerg versus Protoss games, um, simply because of the fact that Protoss uh, do have a lot of defense 
defenses versus uh, drops, and, and their high Templar can kill drops very easily. But uh, this early in the game, Stark doesn't have a lot of units, so he is kind of vulnerable to that drop, and it definitely looks like Savior is setting up for the drop, and he might be waiting for a few more Hydralis, or maybe he's waiting for Lurker technology. Definitely if he had Lurkers, he might he, he would have a better chance. It looks like Savior is actually setting up for a two-pronged attack. He's going to he's gonna try and pressure Stark's main with those Hydralis, and, and uh, Stark's... Uh, Entrance. Okay, actually he's going to drop both, he's going to drop the expansion, and he's also going to drop the main. So, uh, he's going to force Stork, he's going to distract him with the drop in his expansion first, and then Saber's going to drop in, in uh, Stork's main. And uh, Saber floating those overlords over, and he's dropped those Hydralis in Stork's main, and Stork is using up the uh, storms, uh, and uh, Saber uh, actually microing those overlords very well, and he's coming in with a drop on the main now, so Saber is now dropping Stork's main. So Stork is being forced to defend on, on, on two directions one, but most of his units are, are in his expansion, and he's used up those storms, so he doesn't have anything to defend his main, and uh, Saber, oh my god, Saber is inflicting a ton of damage with that drop, and it looks like he's going to reinforce very soon, Stork trying to get those High Templar up there. Saber needs to focus this uh, Nexus down and get it down before he, he gets taken up by the High Templar, Stork, uh, Stork, with all his troops. Stork relied too much on Photon Cannons to keep his, uh, keep Saber out, I don't think he anticipated that drop at all, and, and Saber now focusing on that Nexus, and he does take that Nexus down, uh, it's brilliant play by Saber, and he's just microing those uh, Hydralis uh, between those storms, but, but Stork has enough troops to, um, to stop that. But uh, that has shifted the momentum of the game completely and utterly in Savior's favor. Uh, Stork has lost that nexus. Stork has no gas. Uh, and that is very, very significant. That is pretty much a killer blow. That That is pretty much, I would I would almost call that as GG. Because Stork has no gas. He cannot make Templars uh, uh, because he needs the gas. And Savior now readying up another drop. Savior needs to, Savior is doing the right thing in maintaining the pressure on Stork. Uh, and Stork again has no troops. This time he's dropping in a few Zerglings along with Hydralis. Uh, and and uh, Stork forced to defend once again. Savior doesn't have a lot of troops this time in the drop, but that also means that, uh, the, the, that Stork is not going to use Storm, but uh, Stork does have more than enough units, uh, and you can see Stork pumping out a lot of Zelos there because he does not have the gas, so uh, that's going to put him in a big spot of bother, um, and Savior is making Lurkers uh, inside Stork's main, so Savior's actually got Lurkers up inside Stork's main, I don't know if Stork has observers yet, he did build a robotics facility, but I didn't see him build an observatory, so he may not have observers, at the same time I do note at the... Um, uh, 8 o'clock base that Savior I think has planted another expansion down there and, and if he gets that expansion up he's going to have 4 gas and, and, and that's going to spell uh, just the end of the game for Stork so Stork does not look to me okay Stork has his observers up so he's going to try and take down those lurkers but Savior coming in with reinforcements reinforce those lurkers now Stork doesn't seem to have a high templar there or no actually Stork, Savior d d did not have much in the way of reinforcements just a couple of hydras but it was enough to uh, stave off uh, that uh, attack by Stork to, to push those units back and Savior still inside Stork's base and he's dropping uh, Lurkers now at the top uh, left corner of Stork's base really causing a huge amount of bother for Stork uh, he's loaded that Lurker back up he's going to drop that into uh, Stork's mineral line and, and Stork's uh, Mineral explodes. He does not have any defense there. He does not have any cannons. His force is his limited troops are busy as it is coping with the uh, savior's uh, attack at at the at his main, and, and that's really causing a lot of tr trouble for Stark. Stark again, as I said, has no gas, so he can't even. Uh, okay, he, he's got his nexus back up now, so he he desperately needs to try and get some gas. But savior is maintaining the pressure constantly. Stark essentially at this stage fighting only with Xenots because savior very very brilliantly took out that nexus in his previous drop. Stark is unable to make dragoons. He He's unable to make Templar. He's got one Templar out, uh, but but that's it, and that's not going to be enough to uh, stop Savior. That Lurker still buried there. He's not even able to make Observers. So Stork needs Observers. He needs Templars. He needs Dragoons to try and fight this battle. But but he can't make any of those, and that one Lurker with with almost no hit points left is is in, is is causing a lot of trouble and is stopping Stark from mining that uh, uh, assimilator. But he should.